E4 by 19-year-old sensation Andrew Hong, prawn to see ships by Magnus Carlsen, world number one, and after D4, we've got ourselves a Karo Khan. An advanced variation, this is Tilted Tuesday, played on the 11th of June 2024, and the opening steady, but the climax of this game, I have not seen the likes of in a long time. So here we have Bishop F5, from Magnus Carlsen. Clock time's on the left. This is online elite chess. Now we get knight f3 and e6. Magnus sets up the old party hat pawn formation. Who doesn't love wearing a party hat unless you're at a three-year-old's birthday party making small talk with parents you can't even remember the name of. We see bishop e2, the Nigel Short variation. A5 from Magnus, castles and a Four, because obviously bro don't get your bits out push the a pawn down the board this is modern chess andrew carries on sensibly with knight to c3 blocking the c pawn but we're going to see his idea because after magnus develops we get bishop d2 pawn h6 giving this one some wiggle room and now pawn to b3 is andrew preparing to fee in keto the rook or capture the pawn on a4 with the knight there probably the latter so magnus goes b5 look at that for a pawn formation on the light squares this is his himalayas and after pawn takes on a4 magnus reveals his cunning plan before he recaptures a4 here, he pushes on the p, attacks the knight, it's stumbling backwards, and now he breaks through. And although it looks great for black, space, pieces retreating, this is a nice breakout move. You can't support with c5, you're still behind in some development. So Magnus goes queen to a8, pressuring the a2 pawn, and we see captures on b4. If you now take on a2, it's too much. You have to start developing. Magnus does it, and don't take the bishops off the board here. Andrew also senses he's got to get his forces back into the game. Don't play with half your army, so he goes knight c3. And it's a tricky dicky move, because you're hitting the rook, and if it retreats anywhere, then there's crazy tactics in the air with knight takes on d5, knight b5, threatening big forks, and you open up the lines of these bishops. So that's why Magnus correctly takes off the horsey, bishop recaptures, it's currently blunted, but look how it activates. Knight e7 from Magnus and a3. Headed for the promised land, get onto this amazing diagonal, Magnus just in time to castle, but now here comes the sniper. The knight is hit, defended, he's world number one magnus spot in it now we see queen b3 connecting the rooks always good policy and bishop g4 pressuring the knight which is defending the center and clearing f5 for this one to hop forth so rook fc1 played more good chess rooks belong on open files or half open files knight f5 the pawn covered for now by the queen and queen to c3 intensifying the pressure is the prawn going to drop off the board here well magnus doesn't care he goes knight b6 does a come at me bro but andrew doesn't take the pawn if he does this then after this one here of takes on f3 you can take the queens off first but this is roughly how the lines go the knight now hops forth because you distracted the bishop you gain the c4 square the rook's a bit offside this pawn's loose there's pressure down here twice it's uncomfortable so coming back here that's why andrew didn't take good chess he goes h3 immediately magnus therefore takes we get bishop recaptures and rook c8 a bit passive not what magnus wants but necessary to hold that pawn there and this now is a great move by andrew this guy's got some class about him i tell you keeping up on the clock and finding these kind of moves look simple when you see it but retreating never easy to see to then be able to go forward he hits the best diagonal for this bishop recognizes it so fast and he's looking for some attacking stuff magnus goes knight a4 hits the queen it slides to d3 
sets up the battery, g4 for the score, looking to checkmate the black king or drive it out its cubby hole. Wait, no you can't, it would be a checkmate. So Magnus goes knight b2, queen hit, moves, you can go back, repeat, but Magnus doesn't want that. He's the stronger player, he's pushing, 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 and now after bishop c5, the rook saves itself and the queen comes back to the diagonal here. Magnus decides to not keep hopping. He blunts the way with g6, but this is of course an ugly pawn structure when you've got no dark squared bishop to oppose this one. g4 now played, and where's that knight stumbling to? Very few squares. It jumps to h4, it is the best move, but king h2 now played, king g3 on the way, the knight about to drop, Magnus getting really low on time, he invests half of his remaining time here to go queen a5, and it's a great move, because after king g3, hitting the pony, if you go g5, you're getting kebab down here of course, Magnus shows his point with queen to d8 covers that one just in time to defend. I absolutely love the way these guys are sparring. Who is this guy? Keeping up with Magnus at every turn. Rook AB1 challenges the file. Magnus doubles here, but after these ones go into the blender, white remains better. Bishop pair, outside pass pawn, stranded knight, better pawn structure. This is awesome chess from Andrew Hong. Not afraid after Magnus gets in his face to launch another pawn down the board, kick back that queen, and then here carry on pushing his own P. But it wasn't the best move. You should go a bit steady here. Bishop c2, bishop b4, but a4 played, very natural, but Magnus now finds just the most awesome resource. It's so impressive what these guys can do. Low on time, he plays queen to a5. And the reason the pawn was good back here on a3 is you could meet this with bishop b4, but now you can't. Hang on, aren't you dropping an entire knight? Well, this is the point. Stockfish poops its pants because queen e1 check comes. How about that one? This the only way to avoid a checkmate, but now you push on with the pawn. Distract the king, it can't stay with the queen, you lose your lady and with it the game. What a crazy line. So that's why queen e2, to cover queen e1. Threat to now take the knight. So g5 from Magnus, but he distracted the queen off the diagonal. He can now play g5. Such good cat and mouse chess. We get captures, pawn recaptures, and now the best moves here, bishop d3, king f2, some king safety stuff, but bishop e7 played, going after the pawn, and this bar just turns into a pogo stick, but we're not going to get lost at every juncture, right, going in on where the bar doesn't like it, we're going to enjoy the chess, because Andrew's going after the pawn, but this is the problem, he's allowed Magnus in with a check, Blocking with the bishop is best, but he plays the very natural king to h2 and Stockfish really has a meltdown because Magnus finally gets that knight out the box. King is checked, it moves, but Magnus doesn't play the right follow-up move. Knight c to d2 is best. Difficult move to play because you don't take the free material, but you bring more firepower into the attack and then you just slowly kill the white king. White can't survive, but Magnus takes here, hits the queen, such a natural move, but now queen d3 comes and because it's threatening mate, it's forcing the queens off, suddenly Magnus's attack has dissipated and white is the one fighting back, bishop pair, outside pawn, but you can neutralize it with knight b2. Hit these, there's no bishop c2 or this knight takes, you win the a4 pawn. Magnus should have done it, but he goes for this central pawn instead. He leaves the bishop on the board. Look at the sniper power along that diagonal there. It's like Jude Law, enemy at the gates. He sucks in that film, what a terrible actor. And after knight c4, for ages now, Stockfish is screaming to eliminate that knight, but not easy decision to make. You give black this running pawn, but okay, not played. Andrew picks up on g5, c5 on the board. Still, he doesn't take the knight. We see king f2, knight b3. Now we see the square covered, preparing to push the pawn soon, so knight d6 played, clearing the way for the c pawn to roll, 
plus stopping this threat and then the a pawn pushing and after bishop b6 magnus gets his pawn running here what a race we've got on red carpet rolled out for both players i've never seen a youngster going toe to toe in the end game with magnus like this low on the clock it really is incredible a5 played the knight comes back Bishop is saved, now we see king f8, but hang on, Andrew's like, not so fast, Magnus. You want to go wandering over there? H4, my friend, I'm keeping you honest. Magnus has to come back. Don't forget, Magnus is a pawn ahead here, but Andrew, fighting like a lion, goes pawn h5. We get knight c5 played, king e3, knight a6, blockading, hitting the bishop. Magnus in his element, low on time, endgame complications. He blocks that one, the bishop retreats, and e5. I mean, look at the position. The writing is on the wall right it's prawnageddon those ones coming down like space invaders magnus got the center the bishops blunted everything he wins this 99 out of 100 but andrew keeps fighting with pawn g5 saying you take me i take on e5 and it's a trickier move than it looks because if you go here check then actually the king really gets in on the light squares this is the most precise with king f3. And even though you could go like this, let's say, well, now you let the bishop come in here. You can go bishop a3, but soon this one's coming. There's some dangerous stuff going on. White really fights back into the game. Not going to go down every line, but Magnus didn't want to create the chink in the armor. He keeps the phalanx of pawns connected, and so he plays this good move of knight to e7 here. In response, we get check. Now king g6 and takes on f6 played. King recaptures, still covering this pawn here, and that's why Andrew plays pawn h7. If you go king g7 to stop the march, then the e-pawn drops. Again, you can check, but you expose the light squares. So Magnus plays the best move. He covers with the pony. Now bishop g2, going after the d5 pawn, and Magnus makes a blunder here. He gets magnus by a youngster, 19 years old, coming out the States. Who is this kid? He plays King G7. He should push the pawn, but probably he hesitates because White's got this line. It liquidates things. You're just headed for a draw. Different ways to play, but this was one of them. So instead, we see King G7. Magnus keeping the play alive, but now he emerges simply worse in this endgame here. The knight saves itself. The bishop hits a new diagonal. The king marches back over. It's miles away from the action, right in Siberia, trying to get back in. Now the red card it rolled out so magnus desperately brings the other knight over this is how the game proceeds pawn a7 knight b6 he's just in time covering the square here and you'd love to go here threaten this one but then black takes with check that's key so instead we get takes with check the king goes now on bishop b5 here looking for bishop c6 so Magnus brings in the king. Again, you can go bishop c6 immediately, but this one first played. The knight stumbling to the corner. Now bishop c6. The knight joins its brother here, just defending, and we get this check. Look at the power of the clergyman. Driving the king forward. Also could have gone backwards. Either way, you're kind of getting shouldered around. The power of the bishops and the king. The knights tied up there, fighting for the same squares. And now there's an amazing line with bishop to d4 the idea is similar with different moves basically you force this swish and zook where black gets driven into a corner no squares available you have to move one of the knights and then either this one drops or if uh, this goes well okay if this one moves it drops if this one moves then this one drops it's over so that was the way to go but bishop d6 was played it allows magnus king c8 white is still winning but the game goes nuts they've got no time chucking the pieces around this is how it proceeded here magnus fighting they're scrambling on seconds they get one second back per move but it's not much the bishop retreats this is now a draw knight f7 check hits these two king moves don't take the bishop, that actually leads to a forced loss because this one gets driven away, the king more active, the pawn goes through. So instead Magnus moves the knight, recognizing it, but coming here, 
was actually the best move. Then you eliminate this bishop, I believe is how the line goes. But this one played king e7 in response, but hang on. We have an end to the game. Andrew Hong wins it on time, keeping Magnus under the cosh there. He just end-gamed the end-game goat. I've not seen anything like that in quite some time. Magnus was a pawn up, don't forget. Really special stuff from this young man. He also played Magnus in an incredible game in a recent title Tuesday. That one's on screen now if you want to check it out for more epic chess between these two players. Thanks very much for watching and see you soon.